I'm Charles Morris, Emeritus President and Speaker of Haven Today, and uh, I'm joined now by our new President and Speaker, David Wolin. Good afternoon to you too, David. Hey, good to see you, Charles. Hey, my wife made me hot chocolate. I don't know uh, what you have in your hand right now, but... Uh, it's not as good as what you've got, Charles. I just made uh, a little bit of Earl Grey, so I'll be jealous most of this call. Uh, well, I don't get jealous at Earl Grey. So if you had Cuban <laughs> coffee in your hand, that would be another story. Well, thank you to everyone that's joining us. We have people from all over North America joining us right now. And uh, maybe as time permits, uh, you know, maybe... Uh, uh, Maybe we'll get a few weather reports along the way, too. I see people like Daniel Winkowitz, who's joined us from Iowa. Uh, you understand winter more than I understand in the Pacific Northwest. Um, we've got also helping us out on the call today, uh, Tamara Chamberlain, who's at Command Central in California. Also, Moises Luna, who is actually the producer of our Spanish Shell Auto program. Um, and of all things, our regular producer for the English program, Troy Lambert, he's in Florida this week. So how could anyone go to Florida this week? Because I'm snowed in with nine inches of snow right now. And uh, I put the dog away. Uh, the dog is with my wife in another part of the house. We had a rat show up at the bird feeder yesterday. And you guys don't want to have to live with a rat showing up on our bird feeder. The dog would go nuts. So... <laughs> this is a special time for us. We've been on the air. Uh, just, David, we're coming up uh, close to the end of the first two weeks of you on the program. And uh, yeah, it's been that's exciting. Right. That's right. It feels like a milestone, Charles. It's uh, it's new, though, for me. I've been around radio for so long and around you for all of these years, but it's a little bit different when you're sitting in this seat. You've been very helpful and kind along the way, so I appreciate it. Well, it it certainly certainly is great, and we're getting messages from people. So let's let's kind of give the format, David. I'm going to ask you to help me because I'm so technically literate. Um, we want to ask people to send questions in, but to also maybe even a few people ask questions, and uh, that would be just great to hear from them. But uh, David, you could do a much better job than me, you know? Yeah, you're, sure. Uh, well, I'll give it a shot. Yeah. We've we've got a couple of options along the bottom of your screen there. You'll see Ray's hand. So that's a that's a good way for you to do that. When the, when the time comes, I think we've got a spot designated for that in our schedule here. But the, the Q&A, there's a couple of little bubble chat icons. You can click that at any time and ask a question. And it'll it'll be there for when we can get to it a little bit later on. And not to worry, everybody, David's 25 years younger than me, so he'll see your questions, even if I don't at this point in my emeritus life. Uh, we, we, should, we should get started, though, and let's just talk a little bit about what we called this meeting for together today. Uh, David, we've known each other a long time. You know, I, I am not your father. He is on the Zoom call. <laughs> But I could be your father. Hey, Dad. Yeah. <laughs> anyway, let's yeah. let's uh, uh, let's go ahead and let's just talk a little bit about your background. Uh, where were you born? Uh, how did we get to know each other in the first place? This is your second rodeo with Haven Ministries, so this is this is really good. Yeah, that's right. That's right. Well, I grew up in Colorado, uh, Charles. So the scene behind you is a familiar one for me. Um, grew up in the snow and uh, lived my my whole life there. And I think we've shared some of this on the air. Grew up in a wonderful Christian home. Um, my my parents were such strong influences in my life, and uh, my grandfather in particular. I've talked about him on the air. Uh, such a powerful witness, not just to me, but to all of his grandkids. And I, I looked up to him then, and I had no idea how impactful what he was pouring into my life was ultimately going to be. Uh, but I came to Christ at a very young age. And it's, in fact, I don't really remember a time when I was not believing in and, and longing to know more 
of God. And, you know, throughout my years growing up and, and being in the church and being part of, uh, you know, the normal things that kids do in youth groups, missions, trips, retreats, all of those kinds of things. Uh, I was heavily involved in music and, and leading worship at, at that time, but the Lord, uh, it, through a series of events, uh, especially during my college years, I had kind of a wandering path uh, through college and came to a, a, a moment of spiritual crisis of sorts. And it it wasn't, Charles, that I was doubting my faith. Uh, it was that I was coming up against some arguments and some some ideas from professors who had, you know, PhDs in philosophy, and I couldn't out reason or out argue them. And I felt like I don't have a good enough answer. I know there is one, but I don't know it. And I felt like this is my one chance I need to, to get a degree in biblical studies. And so I transferred schools and ended up out in Southern California, which is where uh, ultimately that's where my, my wife and I were both going to school. We got married, but uh, we, you and I met Charles before that happened, um, we were. It was at it was at Biola University at a Christmas right? concert. At a, That's yeah, right. At a yes. Concert. Yes. Yeah. Yep. I was telling somebody about your wife Marcy, who I knew before I knew you. Yeah. And uh, and then all of a sudden, somebody tapped me on the back, and I turned around. It was Marcy. She introduced me to her husband, David Woolen. But uh, you know, little. Awesome. Yeah, we weren't even. We were married then. Yeah, well, well, well. And 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 I I should tell everybody about the first time you came to Haven. Mm. Uh, I was struggling. It was my early years of, of being at Haven. Uh, we uh, it was a bit of a rough patch. And uh, I'd gone through the traditional secretary approach, which many ministries have, people in business understand. And then somebody, uh, really the number two guy at Campus Crusade, suggested you need an assistant. You don't need a secretary. Mm. And you need somebody that could go on the road and travel with you some of the time, somebody that could like really, really help and not just write letters and post them, you know? So uh, I mm. called, I talked to your father-in-law and uh, I said, Bill, I've now had, it was up to them at that point, about three different ministry heads that had told me they had gone this approach. And I said to Bill, this is the advice I've had. Uh, and he said, well, why don't you call my son-in-law? He's at Biola and he might know of somebody who could fill the slot. So I remember I was calling on the road one night between Colorado Springs and Denver on my way to the airport, on my way to fly home to California, and I called you on the phone. Uh, we hadn't really talked other than that time that we had met at that Christmas party, which I had forgotten at that point. And I went through, here's what I'm looking for. I made the list and I said, uh, this is the kind of person I need. And there was a long pause at the end of conversation. You said, could I apply for that job? So that's how you came to Haven. <laughs> yeah, that was an answer to prayer. Uh, not quite 20 years ago, Charles. Well, a... well, let's fast forward that. You then stayed with Haven for 10 years. You came when you were 25 years old. And, uh, and then you left me. David, how could you have left me? But the Lord had other plans. You moved to Chicago. Who moves to Chicago? You know, I have winter that's, behind that's me. That's what I was asked when we got here and they found out <laughs> where we come from. <laughs> so uh, tell us a little bit about uh, where you came to Haven from, because that's a rich heritage. That's part of Haven's heritage, not just your heritage, too. Yeah, that's right. That's right. So right up right before I made this transition to step back into Haven, uh, I've spent the last number of years at Far East Broadcasting Company, um, FEBC, which is just an extraordinary um, international broadcasting ministry. Um, and, you know, I, I sometimes would tell people it's it's the most significant um, Christian broadcast ministry that you may have never heard of because they don't broadcast here in the U.S. like they do in 50 countries in other parts of the world. But the, the focus is always on the hardest to reach places. And so there's 
200 and I think 70 some radio stations, um, but they also do social and uh, social broadcasting, um, which is a whole other concept that maybe we'll get to talk about at some point. But um, yeah, Charles, it was it was an eye opener for me. I mean, I've been in broadcast. You and I have done so much together. You and I have traveled together, for that matter, in mm-hmm. throughout a lot of those countries, especially in Southeast Asia. Um, but it was an eye opener for me to realize what it meant that there are what I learned was 3.2 billion unreached people in the world. Um, great resource for that is is the Joshua Project, which quantifies that and breaks it down by people group and, and language. But to realize that there are that many people in the world who are unlikely to hear the gospel in their own context, in their own language, unlikely to meet a Christian, unlikely to come across a church, um, which is hard to believe in mm-hmm. 2024 um, in our highly networked world. So yeah, Charles, I have a heart for for the unreached and for the work of the Lord in some of the hardest reach places. And I'll just slip in here, everybody joining us today. Uh, David Wallen had only been with us for a few months, and I drug him away from Marcy, his wife, for three weeks, and we went to Asia. And uh, <laughs> uh, I, I, you'll never forgive me for that, and I apologize to you for that, but we did have a good trip. We went to a lot of countries. No forgiveness and, uh... is necessary. What a great adventure. <laughs> what a great adventure. Yeah, we were both ready for it to be done, and it was a lesson in what, how not to plan an international trip, but the Lord was with us, and boy, did we learn a lot. Hey, we certainly did. And uh, we were able to minister in the Philippines. Um, it was part of, uh, of course, a member of the original Haven of Rest Quartet. Bob Bowman was one of the two founders of FEBC. Yeah. And right. so there was this rich heritage. But, uh, you know, I don't think we've ever told Marcy how we almost got arrested in China and a few other things along the way. And uh, I certainly haven't told Janet that story before. But uh, well, so we're not on a live Zoom call and Marcy's nobody on the Zoom. Oh, oh my goodness. I didn't later. realize Marcy was with <laughs> us today. But uh, hello, Marcy. <laughs> um, I'm not even going to look to see if Janet's on the call, uh, just uh, in our snowbound house in the Northwest, uh, just outside Vancouver right now. And we're hoping for a snowplow in at least two days to come through and let us out. But, uh, you know, worse (laughs) things could happen. I got plenty of groceries last night and the power is still holding at this point. So anyway, let's let's talk a little bit more about um, the future. And, um, you know, you're taking the reins of this ministry. I'm the fourth speaker. You're the fifth speaker. That's very few speakers. And we turn in just about two months, 90 years uh, of age. And uh, not me at this point, the ministry. And uh, we are, we are, uh, we're still going. And I, I never had the Good pleasure of meeting the founder, Paul Myers, first mate Bob, he went by on the air, but he did not believe the ministry would last much longer than he did. Mm. And yet here we are, and we're the longest running daily Christian radio program still on the air. So Mm. um, I'm not going to say you have my footsteps to follow in, but what are you planning to do here in hopefully your 25 years at Haven? Yeah, that's right, Charles. I did the math. Uh, so 90 years, four speakers. This is a, this is quite a thing I'm signing up for here. But um, my my path into Haven was a long one. And of course, you and I have been staying in touch these last eight years with frequent conversations. And so Haven is, has been near and dear to my heart for a, a long time. And it was honestly with uh, a great conviction that the Lord was leading me out that that I left. Um, but, you know, Haven's always occupied a special a special place in my heart. And the there's a lot of reasons why. Um, when I was getting to the point where the board, we were, we were having discussions and conversations about the future. I remember a board member asked me, David, what are, what are you thinking you want to change about Haven? And I said, well, hold on. That's the conversation I want to have is what are the things that absolutely must not change about Haven? Because this is a, a ministry with such an amazing legacy. And in the I think really the reasons 
for which God called this ministry into existence uh, before any of us were born um, have a lot to do with why we're still on the air today. And we really haven't strayed from those roots. Yes, things have changed and adapted as technology and times have changed, but this is still a, a ministry that I like, I think of it as, as a ministry that walks alongside people. And that that metaphor of, of the, the nautical theme and of, of coming alongside um, our, our listeners in the storms of life that we're all going through, and um, the the anchor is Christ, and and he he is the the haven of rest that that keeps us safe and draws us near. And so, this is this is an alongsider ministry. And Charles, in your time, and this was the the phrase that I think was you were already using this in two thousand five when I came to join the ministry. But it was right there on the top of the website, telling the great story. It's all about Jesus. And so I was emphatic. That's another thing that absolutely cannot and will not change. This is going to always be a Christ-centered, Christ-focused, gospel-proclaiming ministry. And we're going to talk about all kinds of things, um, but it's always going to be spotlighting Christ uh, in the Word and in our lives and in what He's doing around the world. So th those things are critical. Um, but Charles, I haven't answered the what are you going to do part and, and the vision part. So I'll, I mean, I'll say a few words about that. I, I think we're I think we're very much on the right track. We need to continue the things that we're doing and take them to the to the next step as the Lord leads. Uh, the 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 ministry El Faro in Cuba is a critical ministry for Haven. Um, you know, it's, a, it's the the Spanish speaking program. Of course, it's it's focused on Cuba, but uh, Spanish. Um, radio stations all around the world have begun to pick up that program, and it's beginning to really have uh, an impact uh, on the entire Spanish-speaking world. But I know the country of Cuba has a as a uh, you know a warm place in our our hearts. We see what the Lord's doing there. We've got to continue and uh, and and focus on ex expanding, growing that ministry. And but we've also had a long history of coming alongside other. Um, world missions types of organizations. I'm thinking FEBC and Samaritan's Purse and um, Jews for Jesus. And there's a there's a long list uh, as things have happened in the world, as opportunities have come up, stories that people need to hear about and probably wouldn't hear about in the news. And we have an opportunity to take part in a significant way in the Great Commission of Jesus. So uh, these are just a few of the things that I'm excited about and want to continue to champion as we go forward. Well, and maybe we'll have a little more time to talk about that. And of course, you mentioned this a moment ago. One, one of the things we're facing, because we're more than a radio ministry, we have the anchor devotional guide that right. that's been going close to 50 years now. And uh, we also uh, have the future in digital media. Uh, on the radio airwaves, just in North America, uh, we've got a few hundred thousand people a day that are still listening to us. But we also have more and more people that are listening to the program every day on their smartphone. Uh, people are listening to our podcast. We still don't, even last year as we were hit with AI coming on board and whatever that's going to do to us, Boy, I'm glad I'm going emeritus at this point. Uh, we've we've got um, changes that are happening. The, the, the digital outreach is going to continue to just grow. So even, for instance, when we started going into Cuba and started the broadcast into Cuba just a handful of years ago, uh, people would have to go to a public park and download in little 10-minute batches internet. And now internet is growing. And we've got a lot of people that are listening to us on WhatsApp, Telegram, other kinds of channels. But I should mention, we we want to be able to hear from people that are with us. We've got a lot of people that have joined us, a lot of people with the history of Haven. A former board chairman, Bill Smith, is on with us. He's coming from, I don't know, it's probably pretty cold in Bernie, Texas, outside San Antonio. Uh, Bill Holman in Louisiana. Uh, he's been with us to Cuba more than once um, and and has helped encourage us there. But we want you to be able to ask some questions. We've got a few questions already. Let's run through right now one more time how somebody could submit a question 
or even maybe even we could let one or two people ask questions as well. But let's get to those. But David, why don't you just remind us once again, how do I write a question out and put it up? Or how do I, I think it's raise my hand, but you know that yep. more than I yep. do. Yep, that's right. Well, the, so the written questions, if you just want to type it in, you can do that at any time and we'll get to those questions. And you can use the Q&A um, button at the bottom of your screen. I'm assuming it's at every, the bottom of everyone's screen. It's got a couple of little chat bubble icons and you can type there. Uh, or Charles, when the when the time comes, they could also raise their hand, which is um, you know when we can turn their microphone on or help them do that, and then they can just talk and and we'll we'll hear their questions. So both routes are available. And um, yeah, let's let's give it a shot. Don't just raise your hand that way. Take your cursor down to the bottom of the screen where it has the little raised yeah, hand. Yeah, like where it says raise hand. You going. That I do know at least. Well, how about a question? We have one from uh, Tim Hamilton here, which I'll let you answer, David. Mm. Uh, are you both going to be on the program for a period of time? <laughs> I want to take a vacation with my wife after about 25 years. So. Yes. That's that's good. You should you should take a vacation. Uh, I, I would say you've earned it, but the real truth of the matter is Janet's earned it. Um, mm -hmm. Yes. The, so the, the the answer is yes. We will be on the air together for a a good season. The the question is is how long, and the the thing that we've been saying to everybody we've been talking to we've had a number of conversations with radio station managers, you know, people in the broadcast world, and I've said we need to not think of this like a switch, but a dial, right? So it's not it's not like we're making an immediate switch. We're we're turning a dial and we're going to turn it slowly, and um, and so Charles, you've been so uh, helpful and and accommodating, just in, just coaching me and helping me along as you've eased me into the program. But I I'm excited to keep you uh, as as much as I can involved in things um, as long as we can, and then the the day will come. I think Charles when you're not in every single program, but uh, I'll be calling on you probably more than you want me to, to come back in when things are happening or just to just to chat or, you know, to, to step in when it's my turn to go on vacation, maybe. But, well, and, and I was just thinking of that as well. I've already, uh, we're already planning for you to be able to get a vacation because you have three children that are still growing up at home. And Marcy wants you to be able to drive them back to Colorado or go somewhere else and take them sure. on vacation. Uh, tell us about your family a little bit, David. Yeah, for sure. So Marcy and I have been married. Uh, it'll, it'll be 20 years this summer. Um, she, I can't say enough about Marcy. She, uh, she sharpens me. What a woman of God, uh, her love for the word, uh, the way that we've both grown together in, in our walks with Jesus um, and in also in our knowledge of the word, she's just an amazing um, mm -hmm. partner in all things. And, uh, you know, we we have a, a good relationship and, and, and every single day we're usually talking about something r related to the ministry work that we're both involved in, both in our church. We're, we're both actively involved there. She she leads the women's ministries, but also just what we're what we're learning in the word. And we, we have three kids. Um, so we, we have a 12 year old girl um and so she's she's right on the edge of of being a teenager and no i'm not I, I love what's happening in her life and just the, the young woman god is growing her into it's so much of a joy in our lives and we have we have a 10 year old right on her heels so a couple of i guess you call them tweens um and then we've got a little guy who just turned five uh and he's definitely the spice uh, of our of our lives um, and boy, Charles, I, you've only been around him a little bit, but boy, he's the he, wild and woolly one. Well, he yes. is, but this kid can pray, Charles. I mean, it, I, he insisted well, I, on I praying for, that, but he insisted on praying for over dinner the last time I was there. And exactly. it was a beautiful prayer. Hey, let the little children come to me, right? Well, praise God. I think Zach's one of them. So he, he, he does. Well, Let's let's get a few more questions in here right now. They're starting to come in. Mm -hmm. um, Heidi, who I think is the same Heidi that we're mentioning on the program tomorrow. She she got a copy of our brand new Christ and All the Scriptures book, which I'm holding right side up. And uh, 
but she also got a copy of the Christ and all the scripture for her twin sister in Wisconsin. Mm -hmm. She says, how might the program format be changed? That's mm. a pretty good question, I think. Mm. Well, we're not planning any significant changes anytime soon. Uh, I think the the Haven program is um, is is well established, and uh, if it ain't broke, don't fix it. So they say. But uh, there will definitely be new uh, innovations as time goes forward. And we're committed to radio, but there are new channels that we need to be communicating in. I mean, think, Charles, back to 1934, um, when first mate Bob Paul, Paul Myers went on the air, and, and radio was still a pretty new thing. I mean, that's what was mm -hmm. hot. And uh, and today, there are, there are opportunities uh, on live social broadcasting. There's opportunities in the digital space. There are probably going to be opportunities over the next decade that we don't even know about yet. And I think we need to be branching into those places. And, and when you do that, the format adjusts to what works in that kind of a space. Um, so we won't be walking away from radio, but I know we'll be looking to make as big of an impact um, for the glory of Christ and, and for the gospel as we can. And so the, the changes I think that we're going to be seeing sooner than, than later probably will be just in other channels. Hmm. Hopefully that's helpful. I think you're right. Yes. Here's one from Louise Farmer. Good afternoon, Louise in North Carolina. Uh, she says, I'm curious about the difference in ministry of Transworld Radio, which carries El Fado on a 500,000 watt station off Bonaire uh, every night. That's right. Uh, we've even picked up this station in Southern California before when we first went on the air. It has a big reach, covers all of Cuba every night. What's the difference between Transworld Radio, which carries El Fado, and then FEBC that you came to Haven from? Um, I think I would say, Charles, that these are two faithful ministries of massive impact. Lauren Libby's the president of Transworld Radio. Ed Cannon's the president of FEBC. And these two men are fast friends. Um, they, they talk all the time. There's a lot of collaboration. Um, and there's a lot, uh, there, there's a little bit of overlap, but not much, not that much. So I, I don't I wouldn't call out a, a significant difference. I mean, they, they have a unique history and culture, but there's a lot of co uh, collaboration and camaraderie in those organizations, which is exactly what you want to see mm -hmm. uh, in, in global missions. You want to see the, the body of Christ working together. And I've watched these two ministries do that. I've watched these two leaders do that. And, uh, and I'm grateful to call them both friends. And of course, FEBC is operating in other places too. Like, for instance, they're the primary broadcast outlet in Ukraine. Um, right. And of course, uh, Transworld Radio is very big in Latin America. Here's one from. Um, oh, well, let's let's uh, go to Chris Butcher here, David. I was glad to hear you say mm. you were a worship leader earlier in your life. Music's always been a big part of Haven. I hope we'll. You will continue to emphasize that aspect to the program. Yeah, absolutely. That's that's part of Haven's DNA. And uh, and I, in fact, if I don't know if uh, if the fellow who asked that question has had a chance to be on one of these Zoom events with Danny Rojas. Um, I mean, I I say I'm a musician, but I I want to keep <laughs> everyone's expectations pretty low. Uh, enough to lead worship on a Sunday morning, you know, but, uh, our, our, <laughs> our director of El Fado, now he's a musician, uh, Danny Rojas, maybe we'll get to do something together someday. I don't know, but, uh, but yeah, we, we, we need to keep music part of it and yeah, no, no worries there. We're going to, we're going to continue to do that. You do play a guitar though, like Danny Rojas does as well, though. Uh, here's Daniel, Daniel, who's, who's, I mentioned earlier, he's, he's braving the winter hmm. and he, he sent me a note last weekend. He was at a men's retreat, uh, and he was saying how cold it was. He's hmm. asking, and I'm going to throw this to you, David, how do you see changing worldviews in Western society and, uh, affecting the ministry of Haven? Hmm. Wow. What a broad question Daniel sent, and uh, 
hope to see you again in a couple of months here, Daniel. Mm -hmm. But uh, anyway, I know you've got it on your calendar, but go ahead, David. You want, you want to take that on? And in, in less than 30 seconds, how are you going to respond to a question like that? To, to, no, I'll, I'll, I'll try to be succinct. World, the world views are changing fast. Um, the word of God is always relevant to the present, mm -hmm. no matter what, you know, what is changing. Um, but the the world has changed really fast and in the last decade in particular. Um, and my my expectation is that um, as as our highly networked world continues to um, in some ways get smaller, um, and the, the the spiritual climate of our age, uh, at least in the Western world, people aren't so much these days uh, offended by Jesus as much as they just see him as an one option among countless options to add into their lives to to make it just a little bit better. Um, I think the good news, though, is that um, secularism in general and um, the, the the kind of postmodern retreat from truth that we've seen. Uh, over the last few decades, that's it's really running dry, and I think people mm. are desperate. Uh, mm. And it's it's sort of like the the way that the tide comes in and, and goes out. Um, there, the the way that the Holy Spirit has moved throughout history, in in moments of of dryness and then bringing revival. Um, I have a, a dream and a, a hope to see revival within our Western world on a, a scale that we haven't seen for a long, long time. Mm. Um, the Lord's in charge of those things, but we need to be, you know, preaching the gospel in season and out of season. And like you like to say, Charles, with uh, with a copy of the Wall Street Journal or take your newspaper of choice in one hand and, our, and the Bible in the other, and we'll keep doing that. Mm. Well, I'm going to ask answer the next question. Diana Saluski's written in, and thanks, Diana, for joining us from Florida. We have enjoyed meeting Janet on the radio program from mm. time to time. Uh, might we be able to meet Marcy, too? And that has already been discussed. <laughs> uh, Janet has actually, uh, it, 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 Janet's always been a leader in women's Bible studies at church. She's still doing that today. She has done that through the years, taught, led small groups, that kind of thing. Marcy leads uh, that at her church as well. But yes, it's, it's on the board right now. So we're planning on doing that, um, and have all four of us on the program too. So, um, I think I hope I answered for Marcy. I know I answered for Janet, at least on that, David. Yep, yep. Well, my, my intention is to bring Marcy into the program as well. She has so much wisdom to offer. And I, boy, I've learned humility over the years and just come to reconcile the, the fact that I see things through a man's eyes. And there are some things that especially that, that a, a woman can see. Um, and I'm grateful for for the wisdom that, that she brings. So um, yep, yep, Marcy, Marcy's gonna, Lord willing, be able to join us on the air soon. Amen. Absolutely. Well, uh, a, a listener, Joey asks, how will you seek to engage with current events as you become mm. and have become the speaker on the program? Yeah. Well, this is another part, and I'm, I'm actually glad. Thank you, Joey, for bringing that up. We were talking earlier about the things about Haven that are important and part of the DNA, and the the current um, aspect, the, the interacting with current events and news, is something that uh, has been part of Haven as long as I've known it, and I'm committed for us to continue to do that as well. And uh, this is something that probably means more to the, the, the radio broadcasters and, and radio stations out there. But Charles, more often than not, we record today for tomorrow. Um, before this call, you and I were recording, this is Wednesday, so we were recording the Thursday program. Mm -hmm. um, so, mm -hmm. you know, we, we drive pretty close to the edge, so to speak. Uh, but that's important. And we, we feel like that's, that's a necessary component so that we're able to constantly be speaking into the present. And we'll continue. We'll continue to do that, um, but there's an aspect to of just topically. What are we choosing? What are we gonna What are we gonna be talking about? And and there are a lot of hot topics today uh, that that we probably will need to speak into as as they come up, and we'll we'll find the right way to do that. We'll find the right people to bring on the air 
Um, but the we're not going to get too um, off. We're not going to get let ourselves get off track. We're going to continue to be bringing it back to the great story that's that's all about Jesus, and we're going to bring ourselves back to the to the Word of God, no matter what it is that we're talking about. And I think that's important to emphasize. Uh, you know, we we live in a in a in a much divided Christendom today, mm -hmm. and uh, yes, it's a political year. There's a general election come this November, and some people, when you talk about what's going on, say in an election year, or COVID, whether you mask or don't mask, a lot of people get angry pretty fast thinking they heard you say something you didn't say mm. number one i could speak for david here he's not mm. going to be taking a political agenda there are no axes to grind we're not going to tell people how to vote we ask you to vote for jesus mm. uh nothing wrong with voting that's fine uh but uh you know whether you're in Canada, and you're talking to Christians in Canada who uh, are concerned about their prime minister, or whether you're in the United States and people are concerned about their president or who will be the next president or whatever. Our goal it has just always been, ever since 9-11, when we added the word today to the format, Haven Today, is yes, we talk about what's in the world, but the answers for the world are not found in the New York Times or the Wall Street Journal, or they're not found on Fox News or MSNBC, uh, they're found in God's word, or as we said on today's program, mm. as Augustine said, mm. it's out of scripture that we see the face of God. It's how we meet Jesus. That's where the answers are going to come. And we are not called in anger to speak to other people in this world and tell them how they should vote or how should they think about any particular issue. We are all, as believers in Christ, called to share the lavish love of Jesus. And I'm sorry, I'm starting to preach right now, so let's go to another question, David. Oh, it's good. It's good. <laughs> oh, Bill uh, in Baton Rouge uh, has a question for you, David. As you gave your background in the early years, you said it was as administrative assistant. Hmm. Any other functions? Oh, he wasn't the administrative assistant <laughs> very long, Bill. So, okay, David, what else did you do? Oh man, no. yeah. How did you come back? Boy, did that change fast. Yeah, I was Charles. I was your assistant. Oh man, what was it? Six months? Maybe no, it was longer than that. It was longer than that. Maybe not, not maybe quite a year. And a year. Half. Well, yeah. okay. All right. Yeah. So maybe that much. Um, but yeah, the events happened in, in the ministry with some people that that were in departing, and there was a real need for um leadership in a moment. And uh I'm still shocked, Charles, that you and the board tapped me for this, but I I took on the role of COO for the organization. Um, and that was, that was what I was doing, um, for Haven right up until the, the point that I left. So the vast majority of the time, that was the, that was the role I occupied and, uh, that maybe I'll tack on one other piece of it, because for me, it's significant that, you know, we were, it was 2014 maybe. And, uh, and I think actually Charles, we were up at a, at a Canadian Haven Canada board meeting and we were talking about the the anchor devotional and what a significant part of Haven's ministry that is. And the idea came up, well, why don't we record a, a one-minute radio program as a counterpart for our anchor devotional ministry? And, and so that was something that I had the privilege of being able to start. And so we began doing that in 2015. And so I was writing and hosting that toward the end of my time. And and even actually, as I was technically outside of Haven, I continued to voice that program for five years uh, until you took over for me, Charles, right around the time that, that COVID hit. Hmm. That's good. That's very good. Yes, absolutely. Well, uh, we got a lot of questions coming in here right now. Let, this is a quick one. This is an easy one. Uh, Jenny, uh, do you plan to continue to highlight specific books on the program and include them as a monthly offer? Absolutely. Absolutely. We'll continue to do that. But books, for sure. 
uh, and maybe some other things. There, there are some people great- People still read. <laughs> yeah, yeah, there are people that still Should read. read. <laughs> I'm one of them. Look behind me. I love books. Um, <laughs> hey, and- give us a little, a, a little preview here. We're going to have somebody special on in the next few weeks that you and that's, I interviewed just oh, a that's, couple of weeks right. ago. That's right. Oh, so special. So we, this interview, I mean, we usually record today for tomorrow, but sometimes we get interviews ahead of time. We did that um, a few weeks ago. Charles and I were in Southern California and had the opportunity to be in the same place at the same time with Johnny Erickson Tata. And so we sat down with her in the recording studio. And Charles, I've met Johnny before, uh, but this was the first time doing something like that. It's technically my first interview and uh, she's got a book coming out. So we'll be, we'll be offering that soon. What a, what a blessing that was to be with, with her, but yes, there are, and there are more, there are more coming, including it. There's a DVD that uh, a, a documentary that I'm hoping to offer around the Easter time frame that I think will uh, really be a blessing as well. Mm. Okay. Here's a program idea. Tamara, could you, uh, Put this down on our content folder uh, so that we've got it there. Gordon Carpenter writing in and saying, do you think that we could put on the air Richard and Shani Dendy? Richard is our Canadian director. Uh, mm. They are super friends to my wife uh, and me. And uh, okay, Gordon, on the list, agree with you totally. David, your call, but it's down. It's on the Sounds list. Sounds like we're committed. Sounds good. <laughs> I think so. Uh, here's another question from someone. Um, uh, how will technology digital production change the financial needs of Haven? Hmm. Uh, boy, David, get out a crystal ball here if we believed in using a crystal ball. Uh, well, fortunately, you, we don't. Um, what do you think? Boy. You know, I, I, I think, I think there may be, there may be some changes um, that will come and I, I really am just throwing darts right now, but uh, you know, a lot of the, 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 the business side, so to speak of broadcast ministry like this has historically been radio station investments uh, because it actually costs money to air on many of the, the big radio stations. And that's still true. So that's a, that's a big part of, of even why we need to raise funds like we do. And because radio reaches people that otherwise could not be reached, just the audience size is so vast. Um, but in the digital future, the, the specialization that's required uh, for people that are, are just well, um, well educated, well um, practiced in the in the trade craft of of doing things digitally, which is constantly changing. I think we're just going to need some some really um, you know a- excellent people that are, are good at digital and are able to to help us. And and honestly, content creation is a piece of it as well. Uh, and we've got such amazing people at Haven. I haven't really had a chance to say that on this call, Charles, but the team that mm. the Lord has brought to this ministry is unbelievable uh and i'm i'm excited to find ways to leverage some of the strengths of some of the other members of our team um but uh, but yeah i i think i think digital it, digital specialization is probably going to be you know people costs more than anything in the future and let me just say uh so everybody has it clear in their mind no matter what you're hearing radio is not dead still right right thank uh, you Charles. yes uh, we do podcasting and we get thousands of people on the podcasts, but in reality, we still have hundreds of thousands of people listening to the radio station. Exactly. So that's going to continue for a little bit of time. Okay, David, this question is for you. What is something we should know about Charles that we do not know? Why is that for me? Smiley, that's a, smiley that face. Sounds like a you question, Charles. <laughs> Why don't you try to answer that? <laughs> oh my goodness. <laughs> Charles Charles is somebody who smells stops and smells the roses. Um and I would I would say that's uh literal um as well as figurative and I've learned something from Charles in this. Uh you know, he he enjoys where he is 
and and make sure that he's not taking for granted. I I don't know how many times Charles we've been on a road trip together, maybe visiting a radio station. I remember one time we were driving in rural Pennsylvania, and we were driving by a spot, and it was really the middle of nowhere. Um, but you knew that George Whitfield had preached an outdoor sermon there, and it, and it was like a deserted shack. And you just we went off. We went off our route to go find that place because we wanted to stand on the same spot and just pray. Mm -hmm. And, you know, in our hurry up, get stuff done type of age that we live in, when we've got to get from A to B as efficiently as possible, Charles is somebody that that stops to to take it in. And, and whether that's people or a place or something to see or something to appreciate. And uh, I've learned to slow down and uh, appreciate where where we're at you know but charles what do you think what's what's something that uh that you think people don't know i'm going to end on this note because our time is running out we need to let people go but uh um uh, i think of people in this world that i meet who would i like to be in a lifeboat with mm. and i just want to tell everybody in the zoom call in all of the years that I've known David Woolen, and it's now a lot of years, David Woolen is somebody I would like to be in the lifeboat with. Mm. And I'll leave it at that. Well, Charles, will you let me tack one last final question on? I know we're almost out of time, but I promised that I would. You're, you're, you've been saying on the air, I'm going emeritus. Can you tell us what you're what one what you mean by that and maybe something that you're looking forward to maybe i borrow from the late j.i packer who um i got to know before he died and uh, um he had gone emeritus probably about the last 15 years of his life he said emeritus you're still doing a lot of work but you don't get paid for it so i would say at this point um I've told the board, I've told you two more years, I'm still with the ministry, I'm emeritus, I'm gonna be still working on projects like Cuba, El Fado, uh, being on the air part of the time. Uh, I'm. We're hoping to get the movie Amazing Grace out this year and who mm -hmm. knows what the Lord wants to do with that. So I'm technically still the manager of Haven Films LLC, which we've, Never had anything like that before the last couple of years. So uh, that's my plans for the future uh, right now, as the Lord gives me strength and gives me help. But uh, my goal at this point is uh, I'm to be with you, David, and I'm to help you in this new role. Uh, not to call the shots for you, but to help you do that. Um, Grateful. Thank you, Charles. Well, let's end. Thank you, everybody for joining us. We didn't get to all the questions. We had a lot more questions that came in, but maybe we'll just do this again sometime in the near future. Mm. Um, David, as the new speaker, as the new president, do you want to lead us in prayer? Yeah, let me do that. Let me do that. Oh, Lord, we want to be people that are all about the glory of the Lord Jesus Christ and put him first. And Lord, we want to be faithful. We know that in this world obsessed with success and big numbers and being impressive, Lord Jesus, you called us to another metric of success, and that's faithfulness. So I pray, Lord, for this ministry, and I just confess my own weakness and need for you. And you know, Lord, even some of the prayers that I've been praying the last two weeks, stepping into a radio a live you know, radio role that is, is so public and saying, Lord, I feel my need and my desperation for you. Well, Lord, that's mm -hmm. a great place to be. May we feel our, our weakness and our need because we know that that's when in Jesus we're made strong. And I do pray for Haven's ministry, which is not mine. Lord, it belongs to you. Lord, I pray that you would allow for this ministry to continue the good work that you've begun uh, and continued in it through all of these years. 
and that, Lord Jesus, we would be telling the great story that is all about you. And I ask for your help in this, in Jesus' name. Amen. Mm. Thank you, everybody. Thanks for joining us. Be with you, and uh, we'll see you again then.